What's up everyone and happy new year. I'm super excited to kick off this year showing you how to make some extra money by teaching you how to start investing in the stock market. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms and most importantly, build wealth. So the year just started and there's a ton of opportunity to make money in the stock market. So the information in this video can definitely help you make a lot of money by the end of this year. And you can 100% apply this over and over again. Quick disclaimer, I am not a financial advisor or a stock expert. My purpose for you is simply to educate and entertain. But at the end of the day, you've got to do your own research and you are responsible for your own investment decisions. Now, this is how you get started investing in stocks. First, you've got to pick your brokerage. That'll be the platform that your investments live on. These may differ depending on where you're located in the world, but these are just a few that I've used myself that I find valuable. These are in no particular order, by the way. We've got Robinhood, which is probably the most user-friendly. Weeble, which is what I use right now. We've got Vanguard, M1 Finance. I'm currently using both of those. Fidelity, and last but not least, TD Ameritrade. Now there's several more out there, but those are just at the top of my list. If you're interested in investing with Weeble or M1 Finance, I definitely have links in the description for you. And you also get free stocks with Weeble and you get a bonus with M1 Finance in form of cash. So if you like free money, go ahead and click the links in the description. There you go, that's easy access to easy money. If you wanna learn more about which brokers to use, just head over to Google and type in top brokers to use to trade stocks in your area. From there, you'll have plenty to go off of. Once you've made your choice of which broker to use, now it's time for the fun part. Maybe it's because I'm a nerd, but I actually did have fun doing this part. Think of any company you like, any company at all, and just search for it on your brokerage account and then add it to your watch list if it's available. It really doesn't matter what the company is or why you like them. The purpose of doing this is to one, see how much it costs to buy a share of the company, and two, you can get an idea of how the company performed over the last few years, which we'll get to that in a second. But let's say you like Apple because you really like their AirPods and their iPhones. Like, you might not be a fan of their computers, but you like everything else they do. Cool, go ahead and add them to your watch list. Now let's say for Microsoft, you really like their programs and their computers because you use them every single day. Awesome, you're in there. Go ahead and add them to your watch list. You might like Facebook because that's how you met your girlfriend. Go ahead and add that to your watch list. It's super easy to do this and if you ever run into a blank and you really can't think of any companies, just think of places that you've been to that you really like. And think about the products within those places. It could be something like Walmart, Target, Ulta. Think of the finance industry and banks. Like you should have seen my face when I first started investing. Oh, Visa got a stock? Oh, I'm getting that. I swipe my Visa all the time. It's literally that simple. The only caveat is I'm gonna make sure I strongly advise you to do the opposite of what I did. Because I basically took companies that I was interested in and I went ahead and bought shares of them before first adding them to my watch list. I'll get into why that's a mistake in a second. So once you've added these to your watch list, go ahead and check out the prices and then click on them individually. And just look at the charts. And what I like to do is look at three things. So let's say I'm interested in Adobe because I use Adobe all the time. I love Adobe. That's how I edit my YouTube videos. That's how I edit my thumbnails for YouTube. Adobe makes me money, so I wanna learn more about Adobe. So I went ahead and added them to my watch list. And once I click on the company, I wanna first look at how they've been performing for the last five years. And it's super simple to read, as you can probably see on the screen. It clearly shows you if the stock price is going up or down. And the easy way to look at that is just by looking at the percentage at the top. And if it's positive, it's going up. If it's negative, it's going down. And just by looking at this alone, you can get a pretty solid idea of what type of growth potential you could be looking at for the next few years. And by the way, this isn't to get a guarantee because the past doesn't necessarily mean the future is going to be the same, but it gives you an idea of what you can expect. So then I take a step back from Adobe. I'm like, okay, cool. Over the past five years, you grew 450%. So basically it more than quadrupled itself. But you know, then I'm like, okay, cool. Well, what about the last year? So then I hit the button that says one year and then it shows me over the last year, it grew 13.38%. Then after that, I always think it's a good idea to hit the max button because that's gonna show you how much the stock has grown since it IPO. And that's just the initial public offering. So it's pretty massive, 268,776% growth. That's ridiculous. And I like to look at those because it tells you the exact story of what would have happened to your money if you invested in that company just a few years ago. And as we can see here, this is a company that started off growing very gradually and then boom, just basically hit a straight line up. 
So it's definitely gonna take you a little bit of time to go through every stock that you're interested in, especially if you're like me and you looked at the stock market like it was some big candy store and you were just interested in every single company you saw. Yeah, I understand. But this is no rush, no pressure. This is completely on your time, but that is the first step because you wanna have an idea of what type of growth you could possibly get from investing in whichever stock that you're interested in. Now that's not the only way to research stocks. I just wanna give you that little bit because that's a very simple way of getting started to understand what you're getting yourself into. I want you to understand the history of the growth of the companies that you're wanting to get into. It's not the end all be all though. You definitely wanna research the company itself, understand the company. They always say, don't invest in stuff that you don't understand. So you definitely wanna understand the company, what they're doing right now, and you'd be surprised even the companies that you're into that you're super interested in right now they're working on projects currently that you might not know about and they have future plans about stuff that you probably don't know about so once you read up on that you search articles on google and you you know look at business insider and all this other stuff you get an idea of where the company is going and then you assess the market and you look at what is the future going to hold and you want to look at a few things is the company innovating still or are they still competitive against their competitors what separates them from everybody else and i've already named three companies like apple microsoft and adobe they all have massive advantages over their competitive companies so on the sideline you definitely want to be researching these companies as well because it's not enough to just oh i like this company oh their chart's good so i'm going to invest because then if you do that you don't necessarily know exactly what you're getting yourself into and that could lead to lost money in the future that's what i mean by do your own research there's also more stuff to get into like the revenue how much the company's profiting but we'll, we'll get to that in another video or something i am making an entire investing series but right now my camera don't got the memory for all of that so i'm just going to keep this video at about 20 minutes. So now you've checked out the prices, you know what I'm saying, you've done a little research and now you have a much better idea of what you're getting yourself into. You might find that, you know, a few of the companies that you liked a lot and you added to your watch list, you might love them to death. But even though you love that company, the price might make your stomach turn a little bit, <laughs> like your boy Amazon. You might be like, you know what, I like Amazon, I like Amazon Prime, you know, I like to order from Amazon, but I, I can't pay that. You know what I'm saying? You might be like, you know what? I like Netflix. I like to Netflix and chill, but not for no $600. Uh-uh, nope, not today. This, my friends, brings us to the next thing, pricing. Since you're now entering the world of buying stocks, I want you to look at this as a business. So if you're a business and you have, let's say, 10,000 employees, and out of those 10,000, 1,000 of the employees need company cell phones. You're gonna buy those cell phones in bulk, right? Because when you buy the cell phones in bulk, the price per cell phone goes down. That's why there's family plans and things of that nature when it comes to cell phone companies. And that's why there's bundles when you buy certain video game consoles. It might come with two controllers or it might come with a few video games, but it's all for a much better price than if you bought them separately. Because when you buy things in bulk, you get more bang for your buck. So if you're a business and you know the iPhone 10 costs, let's say, $1,000 a pop, but you got to buy it for 1,000 people, you know that since you're buying it in bulk, you're not going to pay the price for a singular iPhone per person. Instead, the price is going to be more like $700 per iPhone since you're buying so many at once. And I'm just making up random numbers here, so I'm not saying that these are super accurate numbers, but the idea is sure, you can afford to get 1,000 employees a $1,000 phone each, but you don't have to because when you buy it in bulk, it's way cheaper. So take that analogy in with what I'm about to say. So I know you pulled up, you know, a few things that were out of your price range. You know, you probably pulled up Netflix and Amazon. You're like, oh, it's a little bit out of my range right now. But you also might be somebody who has plenty of money set to the side specifically so you could invest. And you might be like, well, look, I, I can afford some Netflix. I can afford some Amazon. But the question you always want to ask yourself is, is this stock worth the amount of money I'm going to spend on it? So let's say you want to go ahead and go through with it. You want to actually buy yourself some stocks. You've taken the time to save up some money and then invest it, and you've saved up quite a bit of money. And you're like, you know what? I want to see what Netflix is about. So you start looking at Netflix. So you pull up Netflix on your watch list, and you see that it's $602 at the time of this recording. Check this out. A quick way to see when a good price range is to get into a stock is actually by typing in Google the 200-day moving average. So in this case, we'd go to Google and type in Netflix 200-day moving average. And just as you would probably think, this is going to tell you the average price of Netflix over the past 200 days. That is a solid baseline to go off of if you want to know what price you should get into a stock at. So if we compare the 200-day moving average with the current price, it's about a $36 difference. 
Then if you look at Netflix's all-time high compared to the 200-day moving average, and by the way, the all-time high is $690 for Netflix, you're looking at a $126 difference between the all-time high and the 200-day moving average. The reason why this is so important is because this is how you can pick your price. Because I'm telling you right now, if you decide to buy a stock at its all-time high, you're gonna be looking sick once the price subsequently drops, and it can be a very, very deep drop. It can be a heavy drop, you know what I'm talking about? And most people can't handle that type of volatility within a stock. And when that happens more times than not, people panic sell, which is a fancy way of saying they just lost their money. I don't want that to be you. So my rule of thumb is anything at the 200 day moving average or below is a good buying point. And you can actually set up alerts in your account that notify you when a price for a certain stock drops at the 200 day moving average. All you gotta do is figure out what the 200 day moving average is, which can be quickly found through a Google search. And then you go to the stock itself on your brokerage account. And then you go to the chart and then you find the price that you want, which is the 200 day moving average. And then you click the blue bell, and then it's gonna notify you once the stock gets to that price. That's exactly what I did with Adobe. And I've actually been watching that stock for a while now because I really wanted to get in on it. But I had that discipline to say that I absolutely refuse to get in on Adobe at its all time high, which was $699.54, by the way. Now it's actually dropped below its 200 day moving average, which is $573. So now I would consider that to be a good buying point for this stock. But here's something you should know. If a stock price ever breaks past its 200 day moving average, meaning going below its 200 day moving average, it could very well keep going down. And when that happens, as long as you have faith in that company, as long as you're bullish on that company and you feel that the price will go up based off of your research, then it's a really good idea to get in at that price because sometimes stocks are gonna drop way below their 200 day moving average. And I'll give you an example. When Microsoft hit this dip that you see on this screen right now, that's when a lot of people got fearful. This was the point of impact where the virus really hit the entire stock market at once pretty much. Most people freaked out and panic sold a ton of their stocks, but those who had faith in Microsoft like myself saw this as a very good buying opportunity because I was like, I'm getting one of the best companies in the world at a really good discount. And all I can say is, Look at Microsoft now. Now that dip didn't really last a super long time, so I definitely didn't get to take full advantage of it, but I got into Microsoft at about 220 and it's now at 336. That's my point. Like just because a stock dips does not mean it's not gonna grow and skyrocket in the future because Microsoft is going absolutely crazy. But that just comes from researching the companies and knowing what you're getting yourself into. Like Microsoft is a monster company and that company just keeps going up, it's crazy. The reason I'm telling you this is because you probably heard the old saying of buy low, sell high. But here's the thing, it's not about selling in the short term. You'll definitely want to have an investing strategy, but I'll tell you this, buying and holding stocks for a long period of time, I'm talking 10, 20, 30 years, is the strategy that'll get you the most in terms of profit. It's all about the long game. And some of us probably just wanna buy a stock at a low price and then sell it at a high price real quick and make a quick buck. And that's cool, I'm not mad at anybody who does that. But if you wanna make passive income from your investments, if you really wanna see your money grow into millions over time, Buying and holding on to the absolute best businesses over the course of years is how you do it. And the key here is getting them at a good price. That way it brings your cost basis down and it lowers your risk of losing money. Let me tell you a little story. My friend at work invested into one of these companies, you know what I'm saying? And the company's name is Lucid Motors. He was telling me, man, you know, I think Lucid's going to the moon, man. So, you know, I went ahead and invested at an all time high because I just, I thought it was going to keep going. You know what I mean? But then, you know, sure enough, man, it started to go down. So I got frustrated and I, I went ahead and sold it. Then you know what happened? It went back up again. So you know what I'm saying? I had to go ahead and, and buy some more. Then it started to, you know, go down again. So I went ahead and sold it. Bro, don't do that. That is not an investing strategy unless your strategy is to lose money. Most people wouldn't have had the heart to tell them, but I told them, hey, bro, that ain't the way to do it. I had to tell him about himself, you know? So check this out. I'm sure you have some questions and I'm sure you've heard the advice saying not to time the market. But I'm here to tell you this. I'm not saying to time the market. This is simply coming up with the strategy, coming up with a plan on what price you would like to get in on a certain stock. And there's gonna come a time where stock does so well over time that you don't know if it's ever gonna go back down to its 200 day moving average. And to that I say this, 
If you ever do feel like a stock will never go back down to its 200 day moving average or below, and if you feel comfortable getting in at a price that's in between its all time high and its 200 day moving average, then you can absolutely do that. But I will say this, if a stock is at an all time high, I ain't buying. Just putting that out there. But the advice I'm about to give you is extremely valuable because it actually gives you a way around this. Because the real strategy is right here. And this is exactly what I'd be doing right now if I was just getting started investing in stocks. So I'm going to give you this free information on how to get started real quick. Then I'll close out the video by sharing a few stocks with you that I think would be good investments so you don't leave this video still not knowing what to invest in. Cool? Cool. So I would start immediately with ETFs. And if you're not familiar with ETFs, they're exchange traded funds. So instead of buying stocks individually, instead of saying, you know what, I really want to buy a Facebook stock, but I also want to get a Microsoft stock, but I can't afford to get both of them. But I love them both so much, I don't know which one to get. Instead of debating, you can actually get an ETF that has both of those stocks in it. Think of an ETF as a variety pack of a bunch of stocks in one share. So I'm going to give you two examples of my favorite ETFs. That's VOO, also known as VU, and there's VTI. I've been investing in both of these for some years now, and they are both awesome. So I'm going to take you over here and show you which stocks are inside of VOO. And by the way, VOO is Vanguard's S&P 500 fund which tracks the S&P 500. And if you don't know what that is, that's the top 500 large cap companies in the US. So as you can see, we got Apple, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Nvidia, Adobe. It has different percentages of each of them. And VOO right now costs $436. So for that price, you get a nice mix of the biggest companies in the US, most of which are probably some of your favorite companies. Then we have VTI. And that's Vanguard's total stock market index. And this includes small, mid, and large cap businesses. So instead of having just 500 companies inside of it like VOO, VTI actually has about 3,500 companies inside of it. And that makes VTI more diversified than VOO is. And it's actually cheaper too. It's actually $244 per share at the time of this recording. So as you can see, the price of both of these has nothing to do with what businesses are inside of them. And the cool thing is both of these ETFs are going to grow at the rate that the companies inside of them grow. And because there's a mix of companies in both of them, it's a much safer investment than individual stocks. Because even if some of the companies inside of it start to go down in price, there's still hundreds of other companies that could be doing well. And that's why I think ETFs are an essential part to anyone's portfolio because it provides the one thing everybody needs in their portfolio balance. One more thing. I know I'm talking your ear off, but this is super important. The cool thing about ETFs is this. Let me show you this real quick. You see how the companies have different percentages beside them and they're in a very specific order according to those percentages. Like you see how Apple and Microsoft were at the top of this ETF. That should tell you something for one, but also whenever companies aren't performing or they're starting to really drop in price, what ETFs do is they reallocate those companies to either a different percentage or they'll completely just take them out and then replace them with other ones, better performing companies. Or they might lower that percentage of that company within that ETF. So let's say Amazon starts acting up a little bit, meaning it starts really dropping in value and it's doing it over a consistent basis. You see how Google is slightly below Amazon? They might rotate it to where Google's in front of Amazon and then Amazon's a little lower, has a slightly lower percentage now. And that's the really cool thing about ETFs because they want you to be in a position to win because they want to win, you know what I'm saying? So the companies inside them, they expect them to be winners. And when someone's dropping off, they get reallocated. And another really cool thing about ETFs is they're great for dollar cost averaging. And if you're not sure what that means, it's basically when you buy things over a regular basis. So it could be once a week, once a month, once every other month, but it's on a regular cadence that you're buying these stocks. It's more practical to do that with ETFs because they're a lot more steady than stocks are. So let's say you wanted to buy two shares of VOO every month. You can do that and still see a very solid, steady increase. So if I was just getting started, I would definitely do my research on ETFs and look at which ones I like the most because those are definitely not the only two that exist, but those are just two of my favorite ones. But once I figured out which ETFs I want to invest in, I would go ahead and dollar cost average them while I'm looking at the individual stocks and looking at what price ranges I want to get into. That way I still have exposure to the market, even though I might not necessarily be already investing in the individual stocks, if that makes sense. So here's some great stocks, in my opinion, that I think would be good investments. Obviously, we have Apple and Microsoft. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't exclude those. 
NVIDIA, oh man, NVIDIA is an absolute monster. I feel like I got into NVIDIA at a really good price. That thing is skyrocketed. That it's right now it's at like 33%, but like a few a few weeks ago it was like at 50 something percent. It was ridiculous how much I gained on that. I like Visa a lot. Uh, I like Square a lot. PayPal, I absolutely love PayPal. It's actually one of my biggest holdings in my portfolio. Nike, Costco, absolutely nasty stock. That thing is just whew. You really can't go wrong with those. Target, Waste Management, Lowe's, and last but not least, Adobe. I think those stocks still have great growth potential and a lot of those pay dividends, which is when a company literally pays you just for owning a share in their company. And just keep in mind, these are my opinions based off of my research and what I know about the company based off of my analysis. So those are the stocks that I think highly of. So I'm definitely not saying to go out and buy all of these immediately, but I am saying you should put them on your watch list and just check them out and look at how they're performing and see if it's something you want to get into or not. Just remember, the stock market is always going to go up and down, just like human emotions, just like anything else in life. So just make sure that you keep your emotions in check. Make sure you do your due diligence and for the love of God, be patient because this game is all about patience. The whole point of being a beginner at investing is understanding the importance of holding stocks for a long period of time. And through that, you're going to have to withstand some volatility because even if you follow the 200 day moving average rule and all that stuff, stocks can drop drastically below their 200 moving day average. And it can just it can be a lot of mental stress if you're watching every little bit, every little thing that happens every day in the stock market. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose all my money. It, just let it ride. Make the right choices. You know what I'm saying? Do your research. And you'll be good. Invest in the top dogs. That's the that's the smartest investment strategy. I mean, companies you like, they're great. But, you know, are they the top dogs? That's what you want to ask yourself. And you also want to make sure you get in at the right prices and know when to dollar cost average, which I'm going to make a ton more videos about this, including my mistakes and in investing and all this other stuff. So you're, this isn't going to be the only video, but for now, I just want you to take this all in. And from there, I just want, and from here, I just want you to do your own research. And you might have to watch this video a few times to really wrap your head around it, but that's just how it works. Like it's a learning curve to everything. I hope you found this video helpful and I want you to comment down below what is going to be your first investment of this year. Or if you already did start making investments, you know, what was your first investment for this year? And remember, following the methods in this video can actually help you make some really good money. So I hope you make a lot of money this year. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.